Don't Move a Muscle. The podcast is starting. You're listening to Podtrificus Totalis, a Harry Potter read-along podcast. Your hosts for this podcast are me, Cassie. And me, Joe. Uh, we put up our first episode, which was the first chapter of Harry Potter uh, and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, so we put up our first episode already, and we talked about kind of the aim of this podcast and our plans of it. But basically what we're doing is just reading through the Harry Potter series chapter by chapter. And now we are at chapter two, The Vanishing Glass. So we've gotten pretty far. Yeah, we're deep into this now there's no turning back so we're going to start our discussion of the chapter with a quick summary which i will do this time because joe did it on the last episode (laughs) um so this chapter opens with um pretty significant time jump the episode opens 10 years from where the last chapter left off we see harry in the dursley's house now who are terrible foster parents to this poor kid Uh, foster parent adoptive parent i don't know what to refer to them as but i guess adopted Mm. whatever i don't know yeah um so they're just terrible parents to him they treat him like garbage yeah what guardians there we go yeah guardians Yep. They're terrible guardians. They are. So they treat this poor kid like garbage. It's Dudley's birthday and he's being a little, little jerk. (laughs) There's another one I want to say there, but it's Dudley's birthday and they're going to the zoo and they have to bring Harry with them. And when they get to the zoo, the glass vanishes on the snake cage and the snake gets out and everybody cries. And that's pretty much what happens in this chapter. Including Harry. Harry cries too. So now we can jump into the chapter a little bit more in depth now that we know what's going on in there. Uh, So the first thing that I just took notice of is that when uh, they're describing the baby pictures, when they're kind of setting up that time jump, it says that Dudley looks like a large pink beach ball wearing different colored bonnets. (laughs) I thought that that was funny and just another example of the colorful use of similes in these books um call back to baby dolphins yes um but yeah we go 10 years into the future and now we're seeing harry at 11 or almost 11 it's just a little bit before his birthday and he lives in the cupboard under the stairs yes we start off at dudley's birthday and harry gets to make him breakfast which (laughs) Um, you can assume happens a lot, and yet Petunia needs to say, don't burn it. Like, I know you're going to burn it, but don't. I don't know if that's necessarily based on, like, prior experience. Like, oh, Harry always burns the bake. Or, no, it just, just seems like, like just another way to put him down. Oh, yeah, they're just being mean to him, like yeah. always. Yeah, yeah. I liked the quote particularly about the uh, Harry's sleeping arrangements. Um, it says, Harry was used to spiders because the cupboard under the stairs was full of them, and that was where he slept. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was funny. Um, yeah, Harry makes the uh, breakfast and Dudley has a little fit. <laughs> yeah, not enough presents. presents. Not enough presents. There's like 31. Only, only 36. Only 36. Yeah, only 36, <laughs> which turns out to be 37 thanks to uh, Aunt Marge, but mm-hmm. still not enough. That's That's a whole... One less than the year prior. Yeah. I wonder, I didn't do the math, but like how many presents did Dudley like start out getting that now it's up to 30 whatever is his like requirement for like a good birthday haul? Well, I mean, at some point he couldn't count. That's true. We have to consider like his memory. Yeah. And you also (laughs) can't say exactly how much it goes up each year. That's true. That's a good point anyway. Okay. So that saves me from doing math. So I'm okay with that. (laughs) Yeah, so during the present scene when Dudley's throwing his fit, Mr. Dursley chuckles and says, Little Tyke wants his money's worth, just like his father. Attaboy, Dudley, and ruffles his hair. Clap back to episode one, <laughs> Little Tyke. Yeah. We spent some time discussing that phrase. So as a baby, that was not as bad as um, I think it's it is bad. now. It's bad the whole time. Well, I mean, seeing it... <laughs> again 10 years later it says that this is like a repeated thing that they're doing like this is how they're raising this kid to just like excuse his actions and be like oh boy is will be boy (laughs) yeah so now it's no longer like oh it's a baby you can say that it's still just like a cute little thing that's fussing around and throwing a tantrum now dudley is way too old to be throwing a tantrum and little tyke is yeah i 
10 at 11 now. I feel like kids at that age throw tantrums. Yeah, but for this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yes, he is being unreasonable. I'm not saying and he's that's not, not how decent parents should react no, to. Uh, absolutely not. They should be tantrum. like, OK, so I guess we're not going to the zoo then. <laughs> yeah. And they should take away like 30 of the 36 presents. <laughs> Um, I do like that we get some descriptions of uh, Harry now that he's a little bit older. Um, You know, he's got his knobbly knees and his messy hair. And uh, I did note that uh, they mentioned that Harry's glasses are taped together because Dudley punches him in the nose so often. Mm -hmm. And that just reminded me of the discussion that we had about Dumbledore. Yes, and his uh, two broken noses. Yeah, yeah. So I just I thought that could be maybe a cool parallel between Harry and Dumbledore. I don't know to what extent there are really parallels in these books between Harry and Dumbledore, but yeah, I mean, as far as we know, it hasn't been broken, but his glasses definitely have been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, several times over. <laughs> yeah, so it says Harry is uh, small and skinny for his age, uh, but he's stuck with Dudley's hand me downs, which are way too big for him mm-hmm. because Dudley is giant. Yeah, and it's also sad because they're the same age, so he's getting what Dudley wore when he was like. Much younger. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like in the movies, I feel like they try to portray that to an extent, at least in the first one when the Harry's wearing that like giant gray T-shirt. I just have like a memory of that. But I'm also like, this is the 90s. And that was kind of the fashion then, <laughs> like okay. baggy T-shirt. I don't know. I don't remember the 90s too well because I was a baby then. But yeah, I was four when it ended. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it's so sad to just think of like this scrawny kid that lives in a hole, basically, and just wears these like hideous clothes and gets mocked by everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just really like the ro- rolling really sets up how just like depressing Harry's life is. Yeah, and even the way they end the chapter is is just um oh well harry doesn't have any friends because dudley's gang uh hates them hates him and nobody wants to cross dudley's gang it's so sad i feel so bad for poor harry (laughs) um poor harry asks where he got his scar speaking more about you know the physical descriptions here and ampetunia says in the car crash which they've kind of made up this car crash that killed harry's parents so that they don't have to tell him the truth um so she tells harry that he got the scar in a car crash and then adds and don't ask questions and that becomes kind of a thing that's discussed that the Dursleys have this rule of like no questions in mm-hmm. their house. But uh, just that line reminded me of uh, Great Expectations, the book by Charles Dickens. OK, Joe's shaking his head. <laughs> Never read it. No. OK, um, Great Expectations is a book by Charles Dickens. And uh, the main character, Pip, is uh, also an orphan and he's being raised by his older sister, Mrs. Joe. It picks up. He's probably around the same age as Harry is in this chapter. Pip is just asking questions. It's not really relevant what he's asking questions about, but uh, his sister, Mrs. Joe, um, that's her name, Mrs. Joe. <laughs> um, her, his sister, Mrs. Joe, says, uh, ask no questions and you'll be told no lies, which is where that phrase comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just it reminded me of that, you know, the whole orphan thing. And then don't ask questions, you know, ask yeah, no questions. Except be they're still no lies. telling him lies. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah they just, they're just so not they don't taking have to that think far. of more. Yeah. And plus, they're not they don't want to suggest that the car crash is a lie. Like if Petunia said you got in a car crash. Also, don't ask questions, because if you don't, I won't have to lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little suspect. <laughs> We get to meet uh, Mrs. Fig next. Well, we don't get to meet Mrs. Fig. Yeah. Mrs. Fig is mentioned because the Dursleys are going on their little trip to the zoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they do something fun, they abandon Harry at Mrs. Fig's house. Well, apparently only once a year on Dudley's birthday that they abandoned him there. Okay, Uh, Because he was saying he was looking forward to not having to see Mrs. Fig for a whole year. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. Petunia gets a very solemn call saying (laughs) Mrs. Fig broke her leg. So... Harry can't come over. That was weird to me when I first read it, but now I'm realizing like, oh, she must have broken her leg like just then. Because at first I was like, okay, her leg is broken. Like, why does that stop Harry from coming to her house? But I guess she must have like broke her leg like that morning. Yeah, like like, if she's still in the hospital, hospital, she definitely can't. But also like if you're going to have a 10 year old child at your house, you're going to want to be able to move a little bit. 
like in mm-hmm. case something goes wrong. Like that's not something the Dursleys would care about. It sounds about. like she just makes Harry sit there and look at pictures of her cats. Yeah, like. but like as a responsible <laughs> adult, she would want to be able to take oh, okay. care of Harry. Yeah. Like like if she said, oh, I um, if something happens to him, I'd like to be able to take him to the hospital oh, yeah, or whatever. Oh, the Dursleys the would Dursleys just be like, like you can yeah, leave who him. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. But she would reject that. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll learn more about Mrs. Fig later on. Mrs. Fig does come back. Um, but yeah, so... Oh no, Harry can't stay at Mrs. Fig, so we're going to have to take him to the zoo. And uh, Vernon and Petunia, like, have this conversation in front of Harry. <laughs> like, we don't want to bring him to the zoo. Like, what are we going to do? And I really liked the uh, quote there, too. Um, the Dursleys often spoke about Harry like this, as though he wasn't there. Or rather, as though he was something very nasty that couldn't understand them, like a slug. <laughs> yeah, I actually read that. Um, J.K. Rowling viewed slugs as like the lowest thing, like really? the grossest, worst thing. Oh, wow. OK, well, we'll definitely see slugs again in the future. I just thought that was another like very specific, like yeah. a slug, like something disgusting and horrible, like a slug. Yeah. <laughs> Loved that. And uh, so Harry suggests, oh, well, I can stay here. You don't have to bring <laughs> me to the zoo. I can just stay here. And they can't even consider that, that, yeah. he, that he's going to destroy the house yeah. if he's left alone. Of course, because he's Harry. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he's just like, oh, I'll play on Dudley's computer. <laughs> That's his like, I'll finally exciting... get to watch TV that I want to watch. Yeah, yeah. Which is so sweet and sad. But <laughs> and so the Dursleys shoot that down and then Vernon or Petunia, I think, says like, oh, we'll just leave him in the car. <laughs> yeah, we can take him to the zoo and leave him in the car. <laughs> like in the middle of the summer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Summer heat and in a busy parking lot too. Yeah. just at the, the zoo too so like that's even worse because like it's not like it's the supermarket because like my mom used to leave me in the car when she would like run into the supermarket for something quick but like the zoo like people don't go there to just make like a quick pit stop <laughs> no not at all but that's <laughs> shot down because the car is new <laughs> and harry will destroy it yeah yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna let him sit in that it's new <laughs> they're so horrible <laughs> it's so sad <laughs> So ultimately, they decide, like, well, I guess we're just going to have to do it. We're just going to have to take this kid to the zoo. Mm-hmm. And there's a line, too, where Harry says, like, he's excited because he's going to get to see something other than, like, the Dursley's house and Mrs. Fig's house. And I'm just, or school. Like, he's going yeah, to get to go somewhere else. Yeah, more specifically, he says uh, he's excited because he's, uh, he's going to be able to see something other than the school, the cupboard. <laughs> And Mrs. Fig's house. That's horrible. Like the limited life experiences of this kid. (laughs) And like, sure, like going to the zoo is exciting for any kid. But for him to be like, oh, my gosh, I get to go outside. Yeah. Like a real place. (laughs) It's so sad. Uh, So Dudley's buddy, Piers Polkis, shows up. Oh, but before that. So when they're talking about Harry having to come with them and Dudley realizes Dudley starts fake (laughs) crying. So he's done with his present tantrum. He's on to a new uh, tantrum, a new tantrum, but specifically bawling and fake bawling just to get his way. He's going to ruin everything. Like, I don't want him there. (laughs) But I really loved Petunia's name for him. Once he starts crying, she says, uh, Dinky Duddy Dums. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just like two syllables too long to be a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know, though. Parents, I don't know. My mom calls me Cassie Mawassi, so that's... Or not really anymore, because I'm an adult now. But that was... She used to call me that when I was a kid. Okay, I don't yeah. have any uh, nicknames. Because you don't have, like, a fun name. It's just Joe. There's Joe. <laughs> Well, excuse me. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just like you already have like pre- predetermined nicknames. I guess I do too. But it's like the cutest name you can get from yours is Joey, and that's not really like you don't you don't like that. No, that's not a great nickname. Yeah, we used to call my cousin Jofi. Jofi. Yeah. Okay. And then Jof, and I call because I didn't, I hadn't seen him in like four years, and I saw him I'm like, hey, Jof, and he's like a teenager now, and everybody's like, he doesn't. Just call him Joe. Like that's not <laughs> that's not a thing anymore. My aunt calls me uh, Giuseppe a lot. Yeah, yeah. So Dinkle Diddy Kins, whatever that is, and Giuseppe. Dinky Diddy Dums. <laughs> Dinky Diddy Dums. It sounds like a candy. Yeah, it should be a candy. I would eat Dinky Diddy Dums. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm sorry. Dinky Duddy Dums. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, Piers Polkis shows up. I feel like that's a great, just like, they say that he's scrawny like a rat. Yeah, they say he's Piers rat Polkis. Like you just, you have to make like a nasty face when you say that. Piers Polkis. Yeah. Just scrunch it up just to pronounce it. Yeah. So Piers Polkis shows up, who's Dudley's partner in crime, apparently, to go to the zoo. And they all go to the zoo together. And it's a great day. And they all go home. And what a nice time they had. Yeah. Nothing else happens. (laughs) That's a chapter. Bye, everybody. (laughs) No. uh, So they go to the zoo. Um, As they're walking in, the Dursleys buy Dudley and Piers uh, big ice cream cones. And the lady serving the ice cream asks harry what he wants before the dursleys like are able to rush out of there so they just buy him like a cheap lemon ice pop like the grossest thing you could possibly purchase i mean lemon ice isn't that bad but i'm sure it was the The, worst thing on the list yeah yeah (laughs) and harry just like happily eats it he's like they you know the narrator isn't it's not first person narration, but it is like from Harry's perspective. So it says like, so they bought him a cheap Harry, a cheap lemon ice pop and Harry eats it. And it's not so bad. <laughs> like, yeah. This kid is just having like the time of his life eating this lemon ice pop. I'm picturing one of those like minute made ice pops. Yeah, you that, like squeeze it from yeah. the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm imagining. Harry is eaten and he's just like psyched about it. <laughs> I think that's adorable. Oh, but um, on the drive to... Um, the zoo, yeah. Yeah, on the drive to the zoo, Mr. Dursley starts talking about oh yeah, the how much he hates mo- motorcyclists. Yeah. And which isn't that I drive and talk about how much I hate motorcyclists too. But go on. But so Harry just throws in like, oh yeah, I had a dream of a flying motorcycle. <laughs> like just simple play conversation. <laughs> this is my dream. Sure, dreams aren't usually interesting, but this sends uh, Vernon off the hinges. Yeah. Motorcycles do not fly <laughs> in his face and nearly rear ends a car. <laughs> I think that's so sweet, too, because, like, I imagine Harry is very guarded at this point in his life because, you know, everything that he says and does, he gets him either a proverbial or actual slap on the face. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just imagining him like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to the zoo, like excited. And he's just sitting in the car and like Vernon says this thing. He's just, oh, I had a dream about a motorcycle once. Just like that filter completely drops because he's just so, so happy, happy to once. be going to the zoo. <laughs> yeah. So Vernon flips and just yells at him that, you know, weird things don't ever happen. Be quiet. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. Let me forget that you're in the car with us. <laughs> <laughs> and like they go into how he's not even allowed to talk about weird stuff happening in cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> Just nothing weird allowed at number four Privet Drive. Absolutely not. They don't hold with that nonsense. Yes. Um, back to the ice pop, though. Not long after that, um, Rowling mentions that Harry gets to eat Dudley's Knickerbocker Glory, which I had to look up. It says that it's like an ice cream thing and Dudley doesn't want it because there's not enough ice cream and Harry gets the leftovers. But it's just like a Sunday. I tried to look at, up like why it's called that, too, and there was no good no reason. No explanation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> which is confusing thinking that it's just a Sunday because it didn't have enough ice cream on top. Yeah, there's like fruit mixed in, I think. Um, from okay. what I could tell, I, uh, this I'm was assuming not an extensive Dudley Google like search. ate the uh, ice cream off the top first and then said there wasn't enough. So Maybe, yeah. Harry was happy to have a nice <laughs> bowl of fruit then. <laughs> yeah, it was basically just like a Sunday, like any old Sunday. It didn't seem that special. So then they mosey on the, through the zoo and end up in the snake pit, the snake area. I don't the know. The reptile house. The reptile house. There we go. I knew there was a word for it. <laughs> it didn't occur to me. Uh, they end up at the reptile house and what happens there? Well, Dudley's the typical obnoxious kid and his father um, entertains him, but also helps in the act of slamming on the glass yeah. of a sleeping animal. <laughs> they really are the worst people alive. <laughs> yeah. So, Dudley is quickly bored and walks away mm-hmm. and... Harry walks up to the glass. The snake uh, gets up and winks at him. The snake gets up. <laughs> yeah, it like yeah. picks up its head and yeah. winks at him. Mm-hmm. He and gets Harry, out of bed and puts his slippers on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Harry uh, looks both ways before winking back. Yeah, which Just, I thought was cute. I can't look too insane as yeah. <laughs> I talk to the snake. The thing is, though, that the way that it's presented in the chapter, it doesn't really feel 
quite like he's talking to the snake. Like, it says, like, oh, the snake made a motion as if to say this. Yeah. So it, it, it yeah, is kind of Yeah, it's just him weird, interpreting yeah, everything. Like, body language. Until, like, the last, yeah. the last thing that the snake says. Yeah, the only thing that the snake officially says is, Brazil, here I come. Thanks, amigo. Do you think he made it to Brazil? The snake? Um... No, unfortunately, I don't think he made it out of the zoo. If it could wrap around a car twice, I'm going to say somebody found it. You don't think that it swam across the ocean to Brazil? I mean, it definitely could have got, gotten there by land, but it would have to taken Brazil? quite a Brazil from time. England? Oh, I'm thinking from America. No, you're right. No, yeah. Plus, it would have to cross the Panama Canal if it was coming from America. I'm sure there's a bridge over it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the snake says but thanks, that's amigo. But that's only obstacle. The Panama Canal. <laughs> yeah. There are yeah. other rivers in its way. Maybe. My geography is not great. Yeah. Well, mine is <laughs> terrible because I thought it was in a different country. Yeah. <laughs> that's just your America-centric thinking. Yeah. You disgusting American. Yeah, so I don't think it made it to Brazil. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it tried. <laughs> but its lack of... Uh, geographic skill it could have you know found a nice little woods and yeah and just hung was out happy there. about thinking it was in brazil yeah <laughs> the snake says thanks amigo and slithers away so i'm why did it say amigo like did this bred in captivity snake learn spanish uh well they speak portuguese in brazil okay so it shouldn't have said amigo oh uh, it it is amigo in Portuguese and Spanish. Portuguese is very similar to Spanish. Um, it's a romance language, so, you know, like Italian, French, Spanish, they all very similar words. So amigo is friend in Portuguese. Okay. Um, so that's right. <laughs> so did this snake learn Portuguese? Well, it's in, from uh, Brazil. Yeah. It's not from Brazil. It was bred in captivity. Oh, yeah, I you guess know, that it is It was bred weird. in the yeah. zoo. Okay, that it is It shouldn't have weird. learned Portuguese. I guess it's a touch, though. So... I took an introductory linguistics course last semester, so I definitely know everything there is to know about language. Um, there is a thing called code switching, um, which is when, like, if you are, say, um, like, if you live in America, but your family speaks Spanish and everything, and so you are bilingual like that, when you switch between the two languages, like, in the middle of the sentence... Um, it, it's more significant than just dropping a word in there, which is borrowing, but it's a it's a notable cultural thing that they do at certain times, and it usually indicates something significant happening. Um, and so the snake saying, like, thanks, amigo, is, I guess, figuratively, it returning to its home. You know, thanks, amigo. It's returning to its home language, its home culture. Okay. It's just how it, did, it, where did it, it learn it's it? It's still weird. Yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the English also, teacher like, reasons. If, if Harry is talking to the snake, does could Harry know Portuguese at all to allow it to understand? Well, I mean, amigo is one of the like if somebody said to if you didn't know Spanish, like if you didn't take Spanish in high school, but said, somebody said like, "Hey, thanks, amigo," you would. It, it's just one of those words that like yeah, culturally know. we know. The yeah. snake shouldn't. It, it's a talking snake, and this is your problem with it that it also knows well, a word in Portuguese. Just yeah, it didn't. Whatever. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, but just like this is one of those little details that I'm like, I can think of a crazy person reason for it, which I already did, uh, or we could just kind of let it slide. <laughs> I'm going to let it slide. But... Okay. Yeah. Let it slither. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Nope. The Dursleys are pissed because Dudley and Piers fall into the the snake pit. Right? They actually don't fall into no? it. No? Okay, that's just the movie? Okay. Yeah. It just disappears as they're leaning against it. Okay. They scream and the snake slithers by. Okay, yeah. Well, either way, like, the zoo director has to, like, apologize to them and Petunia's freaking out and Vernon, like, presumably beats the daylights out of Harry when they get home. <laughs> yeah, he's so angry he can't make a full sentence. He says, uh... Go, cupboard, stay, no meals. That upsets me so much when the Dursleys starve Harry. Like, they do so many horrible things that I don't know why this eats at me in particular. Well, that wasn't an intended pun. Um, it eats at me in particular when they don't give him food. It just, I don't know, that's just like in a unique form of torture. It seems horrible. Yeah, I mean... I mean, Harry says that he, like... That's not the worst thing they could do. I mean, that's... 
pretty bad it's, to no, starve it's something. Terrible. Yeah. Harry says that he like sneaks into the kitchen and I'm assuming they kind of know that that's going on um because like food will disappear just i figure they know that's going on but it's more about just like the punishment of it and making him sneak out to eat you know maybe yeah. they do lock the uh they punish him and make him go to the cupboard yeah they yeah. send him to the cupboard yeah 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 so they send him to the cupboard and poor harry sits in there wishing that some mysterious relative will come and take him away mm -hmm. it's so sad <laughs> Or just a stranger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they mentioned how like people on the street seem to recognize him, which is a little bit of foreshadowing in a way, but also like backshadowing. <laughs> Back You're an English major. You can think of a better. I can't term. really. Um, oh. <laughs> well, in the first chapter, you see all these strange people celebrating yes. and Dumbledore does say like, oh, he's going to be yes. easily recognized by this community. So, yeah, these strange people yeah. do recognize him and, and like, go out of their way to him and <laughs> show their respect and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me wonder, like, how aware the wizarding world is of what's going on with Harry, because none of them say anything or at least it's not mentioned that any of them say anything weird it's just harry's like yeah they it's just weird like they seem to be really excited to see me for some reason so like i don't know it, i just think about that how the wizarding world sees it do they ask themselves like okay where is harry potter like where has he been for the next for the last 10 years do, do they know that he's with the muggles or at the very least when these people are seeing him he is with muggles so That's they're not going to bring anything up okay so that like they just see petunia and they're like okay like better be cautious uh, yeah there's yeah. like and also they're like rules. in public yeah and okay everything. true they yeah. were like getting out of hand the day yeah that you know who was killed yeah and then the chapter finishes up with this sad quote and it says everybody knew that dudley's gang hated that odd harry potter in his baggy old clothes and broken glasses and nobody liked to disagree with dudley's gang it's such a sad yeah it just ends on that <laughs> it's horrible like if i was reading this chapter like aloud to like a child i would be like all right we need to like read forward a little bit because this is just it's too sad like i can't let yeah you this go isn't to even like, like a cliffhanger it's just no, i need to keep sad. reading because we can't be stop happy. here <laughs> <laughs> and so that that brings us to the end of the chapter and just speaking about the chapter overall it reminded me ju of just how lonely it can be to be a kid sometimes like whenever my mom would punish me or something, I would have those like moments where I'm like crying and being like, oh, I wish I had like different parents and like I wish my life was different and I wish like that I wasn't so sad and just I don't know. It was really it's just a sad chapter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's tough to sum up a full 10 years of like terrible parenting. This does a pretty uh, good job this, of giving us a picture. Of it one. gives us a good <laughs> snapshot of like. This happens once a year, and this was, like, a good day for him. Yeah, like, he was so excited, and he just came home. And, like, not to say that the punishment, it's like, oh, the punishment was so awful and so unexpected that he went to his cupboard and cried his eyes out. It was just like, yeah, this is kind of life. Like, it happens. You know? yeah. I spent a lot of my time in here. Yeah, and, like, I guess it's even sadder because his, like, hopes and expectations for the day got so built up, and he was having such a great day, and then this thing happened that wasn't his fault, and, like, nobody was hurt or anything, but just, like, his reaction to is just like hmm, i wish things were different yeah it's just so sad poor harry <laughs> poor harry yeah so I, I wish we could end on a brighter note yeah. but, um, <laughs> there's really it's it, there's no way unless we go to the third chapter which i haven't read yet so <laughs> yeah you haven't read it ever no ever in my life this is my first time <laughs> <laughs> and yeah there's there's no good way for me to segue so i'm just gonna say segue and move on <laughs> Um, so that kind of finishes our chapter discussion. So uh, you can send us emails. We like receiving emails. Not that we have yet because we're recording this before the first episode went up. We want to receive emails from you guys. So you can send us an email to owlpost at podtrificustotalis.com. That's owl as in hoot hoot fly around owl post at p-o-d-t-r-i-f-i-c-u-s-t-o-t-a l-u-s dot com owl post at patrificus totalis dot com you can send us any kind of like corrections things we got wrong expanding on what a knickerbocker glory is if you're british and you're familiar with that kind of thing <laughs> um questions and maybe some of your experiences and memories with the chapter aren't knickerbockers like pants uh, like underwear or something knickers are underwear i don't know 
help us, please, by sending an email to hellpost.potrificustotalis.com. Plus, I'm sure we got other things wrong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we do also have a form on the website now to send an email. I set that up. It's just like you fill in your name and your email address and write us a little message and it'll send the email for you if for some reason that's easier for you. Um, so we have a website, podtrificustotalis.com, where you can find the episodes and notes about the episodes. I typed up a transcript for our first episode. That must have taken a while. It did take a really long time. So I typed up the tra- a transcript. I don't know if that's going to happen for every episode, but we'll try to do it for some of the episodes <laughs> that seems like a you problem so it is a me problem just like everything that happens after we hit the stop recording button yeah um just the voice yeah uh, you're the looks which is a shame because this is a podcast <laughs> yeah i mean we never said that you were like that your looks would attract somebody to it so ouch yeah <laughs> Um, so send us an email. We do also have social media. So you can tweet at us at Podtrificus. You can go on Facebook and find us by searching Podtrificus Totalis. We have a Tumblr and uh, also the website where there's links to all that crap. So PodtrificusTotalis.com. That's our website. That's where we can find us. Um, please subscribe to us because we're now on podcast stuff. So subscribe to us on our podcast stuff and uh, keep listening on. And you can join us next time for Chapter 3, The Letters from No One. <laughs>